Hey guys, welcome back to Portal of Wisdom. I'm back today with another story for you. If you're new to this channel, like and subscribe and click that post notification bell so you can get alerted when I post new videos. And now on to our topic for the day. Everybody loves lost treasure stories or lost gold mine stories, right? Well, this one is about a lost Spanish mine in the Uinta Mountains in current day Utah, kind of in uh, northeast Utah in the mountains there. So it has its origins in the early 1600s to begin with when actually before the pilgrims even landed on the east coast you had the Spanish here and I believe starting around 1610 and after that they had established a lot of Spanish missions on the Rio Grande River so quite a few different quite a few different Spanish missions that they'd had up into the northern reaches of New Mexico and so and, and in uh, southern Arizona and stuff too so they they explored a lot of the mountain areas looking for silver and gold and trying to convert the Indians and, and stuff. So they went all the way up into, you know, Utah, Colorado, Nevada areas. And so they had gotten up into up into the Utah area, what, what would become Utah, and they had a mining expedition out of the, the mountains there, which are the the Uinta Mountains. So this is around the 1680s or so. They had a gold mine in the Uinta Mountains in northeast Utah. And uh, at least it may have even started before the 1680s because I believe the 1680s were about the time that, uh, that they were closing up operations for one of the winners. And they had their pack mules all packed down. The snow had started to come down. They knew they needed to get back to warmer territory and, and retreat back to their Spanish missions and, and stuff in uh, the New Mexico area where things were a lot, um, you know, where, where things were a lot warmer so they could get out of the, the cold snowy mountains. So as they came out of the mountain, um, came down off of the mountains, down the into the the valleys and canyons then they got to an area where it opened up into a nice meadow and the Ute Indians were there waiting for them and basically there was a big massacre all the all the Spanish uh, people were were all killed and and their pack horses were then led back up to the mine the Indians knew where they came from so they're all led back up to the mine and the Indians discarded all of the the gold and gold ingots and and threw the bodies in the mine and and uh, and that's kind of where where it stood for a while the the mine was abandoned there was all kinds of gold in there the dead bodies of the of all the the Spanish prospectors that were working out of the you know some of the Spanish missions and down into Mexico City where they were shipping all the gold and so nothing really happened for a, quite a while. And then in, in uh, 1847, you had the Mormons that, that came across the mountains and settled in the area that would become Salt Lake City. And the Mormons believed that the Ute Indians and the Indians around there were the descendants of the lost tribes of Israel, and they needed to be treated with respect. So they treated the Indians with respect, and no other white people had really treated them with the kind of respect that the Mormon people did. So things, things were kind of in, in harmony for a while. The Indians you know, left them alone and didn't bother their livestock and, and, uh, and, and every, everything was, was going very well. The Indians felt very well respected. And when one of the, uh, sub chiefs was, was in the little village of, uh, Salt Lake City at the time, this, uh, Ute sub chief's name was Yakira 
and he was in a little mercantile or store of some kind, and he observed some Oregon-bound travelers paying for some goods in, a, in that mercantile or store with some gold. So this fascinated him, the ability to use gold to trade for supplies. So Yakira, he went and he told the, the Mormon leader, Brigham Young, he said that... Uh, he knew a place in the mountains where gold like that, that was used in that transaction, could be found in huge quantities. So he told Brigham Young that he would take him into the canyon. And in this canyon, um, he would show him where this you know, where this gold was uh, coming from. So he took him into the mountains, into these canyons, and then uh, I think up on the mountainside, and he showed him the abandoned Spanish mine. And he had told stories about his Ute ancestors being enslaved to work the mines by the Spanish, and he told of the the massacre of the Spanish and, and uh, you know, all the gold ingots that, uh, you know, were on the floor of this mine and so he showed him all this and and then they um, they brought some of the the gold out and while they were in the mine though Yakira told Brigham Young that he was not to tell anyone about this location so he was being friendly to him because he was friendly to the Indians so anyhow it was supposed to be kept a, a, a secret so a few years later in 1853 Thomas Rhodes, who was a devout Mormon, he came to the Salt Lake City area. He had gotten rich in the California gold fields, and now he had more money than he knew what to do with, and he was devoting the rest of his time to the church. And Brigham Young went ahead and revealed to him the mine location since he was a expert miner, and I, I believe uh, um, Young needed some extra help to get some gold out of the mountains. And so he told Rhodes where, you know, where this uh, location was. He swore him to secrecy and they were going to, you know, work the, the gold mines together and they would, you know, would sneak off uh, discreetly. And, and, uh, and I believe there were some Ute Indian guides that, you know, like three or so that, that would take them up into the mountains and, and, uh, you know, Brigham Young said that, you know, this gold was needed for the church and community, for their community to, you know, to prosper. So, anyhow, they they go they go into the mountains and, and they continue to dig out more more gold and gold ore. And uh, Brigham Young kind of has a little uh, clandestine operation to create a small smelter in probably somewhere around the Salt Lake City area to turn this gold into coins for use in the uh, in the community. So just a few people knew about about that and were in control of the operation for the for the smelter. And uh, so they're going on these expeditions into the mountains and and one of the one of the times or every once in a while um, Thomas Rhodes would take his very young son, Caleb, into the mountains. And the Ute guides, they went ahead and tolerated it, but Caleb was never sworn to an oath of secrecy. But he was a young boy at this point. So eventually, though, as, as, as a, a few, quite a few more years go on, in 1869, Thomas Rhodes dies. So the Mormon church talks to Caleb and says that he's to continue this this operation for the church and it's not said how he's paid he's maybe paid by keeping some of the gold ore or whatever but he's to continue the operation and and so he knows where you know where this location is so at this point only Caleb knows the location and a few elderly Ute Indians so as those Ute Indians die and Caleb gets older and too old to, you know, go to the mine and continue to, you know, retrieve gold, he does try to tell a few of a few other people about the location. And he 
supposedly drew three or four maps to the location, but they haven't been found. And Caleb died in 1905, and he was one of the wealthiest men in Utah. He had a big cattle ranch and everything, probably financed from his, uh, you know, mining expeditions. But on his deathbed, he again tried to tell some people the location, but whatever he said was said to be unintelligible. So Caleb wasn't able to pass along the details as to where the mine was at this point. Also, another story um, about this same mine in the 1890s, so probably while, while Caleb wasn't going back and forth to the mine while he was getting too old to do so. In the 1890s, a couple of prospectors apparently had found it, and they had been going back and forth, and they would visit a ranch on the way in or out of the mountains, and and they were they would go to this ranch to allow their pack mules to you know drink and and eat some you know probably eat some grass and stuff like that and and they had shown the ranch owner the um the gold that they were you know bringing out and and so they had told him that they had found the mine and everything but uh one year they made their way to the ranch um, before they headed into the mountains and then they never came out of the mountains and uh, quite a few years later their skeletons were discovered in deep in the mountains and no one knew if they were killed by the Utes or not. Also in 1956 another gentleman named Clark Rhodes which we don't know if he's related to the other Rhodes Caleb and Thomas or not um, but he was a deer hunter he was in in the Uinta Mountains in 1956 and apparently there was a bit of snow that had fallen at that point he was following some bobcat tracks that he found and he Followed the tracks to a mine that was mostly covered up by rocks. And he went in there and he found some Spanish, you know, um, some Spanish artifacts and stuff. It was the, it was the mine. And he mined it a bit um, for a while, but he determined it was too unstable and it wasn't worth dying over. So he never went back. In 1988, two Ute Indian boys showed up with um, some of the gold ingots that were from the mine, but they wouldn't tell where they found them because they feared retaliation from the leaders of the Ute tribe, so they never did speak about where where it was they found them. But that's, actually 88 isn't, isn't too long ago, so there may be some people now that maybe know where it is. But there's been a lot of prospectors in these mountains looking for this lost mine that's supposed to be very rich in gold ore. And, uh... And there's been a lot of people that have that have died in there, real similar to the Lost Dutchman gold mine, where other people may be in those mountains, and and uh, there have been some bodies that have been found with uh, bullets in them that, you know, maybe someone thought they were getting too close to their spot where they think they're close or whatever. So, anyhow, that is the story of the the lost Spanish gold mine in the Uinta Mountains. It's supposedly still there and, and waiting to be found. So like and subscribe if you like these kind of stories.